Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. This is going to be the last video in my series on angular momentum, and today we're going to be relating angular momentum to energy. And so these are the problems where a perfect example is someone spinning. Like imagine you're in a swivel chair and you're spinning around and you have your arms out at first and then you decide to pull your arms in and you start spinning faster. That example is angular momentum. You could even say conservation of angular momentum because it is. But now we're going to take it one step further and we're going to relate it to energy, which is not conserved. So in other words, angular momentum, we're going to say that is always conserved. And then for energy, either kinetic energy or rotational kinetic energy or whatever, we're going to say that's not conserved for these problems. And I don't have a great explanation as for why, but just take my word for it. Angular momentum is going to be conserved for these problems, but energy is not. Energy will be changing. And so let's write out a problem here that we'll be looking at. Okay, so here's the problem. A figure skater pulls her arms in when doing a double axle spin. When she pulls her arms in, her angular velocity increases by three times as much. By what factor does her rotational kinetic energy change? So it sounds like we're trying to find change in kinetic energy, which means I'm going to be using the equation rotational kinetic energy is equal to one half times I times omega squared. I do want to find her initial and her final so I can find the change. So I would say the initial kinetic energy is just one half I omega squared, just keep it in terms of variables. But then KF, her final is one half I three omega squared because her angular velocity increased by a factor of three. You gotta square both these terms, so it's one half I times nine omega squared like this. And then if you're comparing the initial to the final, then you would say, logically speaking, that her rotational kinetic energy increased by nine times as much. And if you say this, this is the wrong answer. Of course, it can't be that easy, right? It's physics class. The mistake we made is that we assumed incorrectly that the angular velocity is the only thing changing. But that's not true, because we know moment of inertia is dependent on the concentration of mass. And so basically what I'm saying is, when she's pulling her arms in and she's spinning faster, her moment of inertia, I, is going to go down. And if you don't know why that's the case, then we're going to use conservation of angular momentum to prove that. L initial equals L final. So anyways, her initial angular momentum is just I times omega, and her final is, I'll call it I final times omega final. We know that omega final is three omega, and if we want to solve for I final, I gotta isolate that variable. Cancel out omega and divide both sides by three, so what I'm saying is her final moment of inertia is one third her initial. So even though her angular velocity increased by a factor of three, there's a trade-off her moment of inertia decreased by a factor of three. So back here when I'm plugging in for K initial, which did not change, and K final, which did change, it's now gonna be one half times one third I times three omega squared. Now they don't cancel exactly the one third and the three because we are squaring the three omega. So in other words, it's one half times one third I times nine omega squared. The one third and the nine reduces to just three I omega squared. And so comparing it to the original one half I omega squared, that was the initial kinetic energy, we would say this increased by only a factor of three and that is our final answer. The rotational kinetic energy increased by a factor of three, three times as much as before. This is a very famous example. There's a few different ways you can see it on a test, quiz, or homework problem. But if you see any problems like this, that it's asking for a change in rotational kinetic energy, just know that you probably have to start out by using L initial equals L final, the conservation of angular momentum. And so that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.